Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching and tuning in and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm feeling good. I got a haircut the other day. I got a clean clothes shave today. I feel so pretty. Um, I'm just playing here, but uh, uh, okay. So uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about selective color in Luminar Trace, uh, Luminar 3. And so selective color is basically when you have like a black and white photo and one thing has a color in it. It's It's some would say cliched, I guess is the word, uh, but it's kind of fun. Uh, but you often might see like a lady in Paris, right? And there's the Eiffel Tower and she's walking down the street and it's a black and white photo, but she's got a red umbrella. I don't know why that, that comes to mind. Anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about. And the reason this came up or the reason I'm doing this video is because um, somebody asked me recently in, in, a, in a comment, hey, how do you do, and I forget what they called it, but uh, what they were getting at is this technique. Um, what I call selective color. I think that's what it's called. I don't really know. But anyway, basically a black and white image with, with one color popping or one object, I should say, within the frame uh, in color and everything else black and white. So um, that's what we're going to do. So let me just hop into the photo and here we are. Now, this is a, uh, a single exposure I shot at the uh, Edinburgh Castle in Edinburgh, Scotland. A number of years ago, I've only been to Edinburgh once and it's freaking gorgeous. I, I'm dying to go back. I love Scotland. So uh, someday I'm going to get back and spend some more time there. But anyway, I was walking around the castle. I only had a few hours in town, literally. And um, I saw this scene and, you know, hey, two red phone boxes. I, I'm an American. These things are just interesting to me. So I take a lot of photos of them. So I just thought it, that would make a good example for this photo because it got a nice pop of red against a otherwise kind of colorless photo. But there is some color there. Now, um, there's some spots in the sky. I'm not going to fix those in this video. To do that, you just go to Tools, you get the eraser, and you erase them. Very simple. It's not what this is about. This is about, hey, how do I keep those red and make everything else black and white? So um, I've already got the raw develop filter on here. And as you can see, um, I didn't change temp or tint. I did make a little bit of contrast adjustment, took down the highlights, and pumped up clarity. So, oh, and I also did a little bit of lens distortion correction. So that allowed me to go, let me get back to the adjust tab from that to that, right? So I've got the photo looking mostly how I want. Oh, and I cropped it too. Anyway, um, I've mostly got it looking how I want it. And now I want to go to um, uh, the, whatever you call it, the selective color. See, I don't even know what it's called. Um, okay, so what a lot of people do is they'll say, hey, I'm going to add a filter. And then they're going to go add black and white. And then they're going to say, well, I'm just going to uh, go to saturation, saturation of red and bring the red back. Well, no, you see, because that brings back there's red in these stones. You can see it's it's kind of showing up in the in the form of orange. So they're like, well, how do I do that? Well, maybe I do this, and then I just go into the brush and I'll just erase it. Let me make my eraser big. I'll erase it from the uh, the stones here. No, that doesn't really work either. So um, that's not how you do it. So here's what I do. Um, let me kill that filter. So I've still got my base photo raw develop. I add a new layer first, right? So you do whatever basic adjustments you want to do on your base layer. I just use the raw develop filter and the crop. I'm going to add a new layer. So up here on the right, plus a new adjustment layer. And this is where I'm going to add black and white. So now I got the black and white filter. Uh, and what I, the other thing I've heard people say is, well, you just add, make it black and white, and then you just drag the saturation back of the color that you want. Okay, so let's do that. Same thing has happened before, right? Which is the saturation, that's 200, which is kind of crazy. Um, but the saturation of the red is back. However, it's all over the place because there's red in some of these cobblestones. There's red all over that wall. So um, that's not going to work either. So let me hit reset. Um, here's what I do. Um, I don't touch any of that stuff because if you turn off this filter, you've already got the red there, right? Everything else, um, when you turn this filter on, everything turns black and white. So I just want to preserve the red. So I just go get the brush and I'll say brush and then I'll say erase and I'm going to erase that from just the phone booth, right? So that's how you get selective color. And I'm doing a sloppy job because I'm going kind of quick here because you probably don't want to watch me masking. Um, but you know what? That's too sloppy even for me in a video. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to clean that up just a tad, right? So let's just get a little bit more red where it belongs, just so it's a little bit better example. Uh, I didn't get any over there, really. So let's see here. All right, maybe come down the side of this guy a little bit. And anyway, so I'm just cleaning up this mess. And, and that's something I recommend that you do, is I go through things fairly quickly in these videos, and that's simply because 
Um, I assume that you don't want to sit here and waste your precious time watching me, you know, move my mouse over the image constantly just doing one thing. It's not like I'm teaching you something here. I'm just kind of making sure this color is in the right place. Um, but if I continually talk, maybe you'll uh, keep watching the video. Um, okay, so I'm done talking and I'm done painting. I'm going to go back to fit to screen. And there we go. I now have a selective color, a uh, selective color photo. So um, I think that looks pretty good, right? Now keep in mind, I did a filter mask. So I'm going to say done, done. Sometimes you got to hit it twice, apparently. No. Um, so there you go. I've got a reasonably decent job, but maybe I want to do a couple of things. Maybe I want to mess with the saturation and the vibrance a little bit, uh, add some structure, add the vignette, right? So there's a clarity slider in black and white. I like to bump that up a little bit. Clarity is like edge contrast, so it helps give the photo a little bit of depth, um, a little bit of kind of oomph, so I like to do that. Um, saturation, I'm actually going to take the saturation down a little bit. That red's a little too intense, even for Mr. Color here. Um, so I'm taking that down a little bit, maybe not that much, I want a little bit more of that back. Um, uh, anyway, so got that going structure, I'm going to bump that up a little bit, and again, just crisping up the photo, and then, hey, I'm into vignettes, I'm sorry, uh, well, you know what, I'm not sorry, I'm, I'm into vignettes. Um, so uh, I'm going to go a little bit that shape and bump up the inner brightness a little bit, and there's a photo. Now, keep in mind, I got a bunch of spots in the sky. My lens was dirty as crap, apparently. Um, I mean, I can see tons of spots up here, which I need to fix, which I'm not going to do in this video because, again, it's boring. It's about as fun as watch me mask in or out um, the black and white from that uh, phone booth. Um, but it's easy to do, as I said, with the erase tool. And that's really how I do a selective color. Um, now, if you wanted, if there were multiple reds and they were uh, only in the places you wanted to see them, the bringing, dragging the red slider in the black and white filter back to the right would actually work in that case. But in most cases, there's red, like in cities and stuff, there's red in everything. Um, but anyway, so I would, it would work in those situations if you have red in multiple places and you wanted to bring it back in all of them. But if you're trying to isolate it or be selective, as, it's, uh, as I call it, selective color, then I think it works best doing it this way. Uh, and that's it. That's a little quick tip, if you will, on how to make a selective color photo. I started with that, and I ended up with that, right? Now, again, I need to clean up the sky, so I apologize. I'm going to quit recording this. I'm going to clean up the sky and take care of that for my own happiness. Um, but um, that's how you do a selective color in Luminar, my friends. So that's it. That's all she wrote. I think we're done here. Uh, and I thought I had a video about this. So I, that person asked me, and I was like, oh, go look at my old video. And then I was like... Uh, what old video exactly? Um, I never found an old video. So I did one in Aurora like two and a half, three years ago, but um, I don't think I've ever want, done one in Luminar. So if I did, I can't find it or I'm too lazy to look. <laughs> Probably that. Um, but I got one now. So there it is. Hope it, uh, hope it helps. Have fun out there making something red in your black and white photos or blue or green, whatever color fancies you. And uh, that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Uh, take care, I guess. Uh, subscribe, like, share, tell your friends about it, call your mom, tell your lover, all that stuff, and that's it. Have a good one. See you soon. Take care and adios.